Shabbat Shalom family. Welcome to another episode, actually a Sabbath episode of Our Journey Towards Eden. Okay, family, so for the ones that are new to the channel, I am Awa Israel. Uh, me and my family are showcasing our journey uh, here, uh, our relocation journey uh, here to the motherland. This is what we basically showcase on our channel. Uh, thinking about doing a new segment on Sabbath, so we'll see how it goes. But if you are new to the channel, and uh, we do ask that you would like, you would share and subscribe. If you are old to the channel, please, please like, share and subscribe. Guys, it's like coming to a potluck and not bringing anything. We're asking you to give an offering. Your offering can be liking, sharing and subscribing and watching the ads. If you want to send a donation, hey, you can do that too. Patreon.com slash Our Journey Towards Eden. But don't feel pressured to do that. But please, if nothing else, like, share, and subscribe, guys. Thank you so much. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I hope this video finds everyone well i thought i'd do something a little different today i actually I videotaped um, our last sabbath but i hadn't shared it yet so i'm still trying to determine if i'm going to share that it was the sabbath at the beach it was a beautiful day last uh, sabbath at the ocean um but i'm coming to you today um just to share a little bit of information and I'm going to try to sum it up in 15 minutes but still get the gist of what I want to convey today. So there has been a buzz about a film that uh, President uh, Obama and Michelle Obama uh, were executive producers of, um, producers of. Um, the name of the uh, film is Leave the World Behind. I I've watched the movie twice. Uh, I've watched uh, Infinite Waters um, take on the film, uh, Ralph Smart, Infinite Waters. I've also watched uh, Go Black to Africa's uh, commentary on the movie which was very insightful some things I had picked up um, the 1619 the obey t-shirt it was just different signs that I had picked up but uh, go black to Africa really really dug in really deep uh, but why am I bringing this film up um, in one of my uh, well in one of our previous videos we talked about uh, let's get prepared and it's really interesting to me it's some of the videos that are probably the most profound and most educational and helpful that don't do very well uh, in regards to views and that's okay um, when you're doing the most highs work you're not just concerned about views the people who need to hear will hear but why am i coming to you today well First of all, um, I'm kind of considering doing a Sabbath edition because 
uh, the Sabbath is a day of rest, but it's also a day of holy convocation. And at this point in time in our life, we have no place to convene with like-minded believers. Uh, believers who don't want you to compromise on your beliefs and want you to veer towards their beliefs. And uh, we're not, we haven't found those who will allow us to freely uh, uh, practice our daily lives, uh, spirituality, the way we feel that our Bantu scrolls uh, tell us to. So, as the Most High lead, I uh, will come to you on the Sabbath and just share what the Most High is saying to me, and hopefully uh, it resonates with you. Uh, and uh, the topic today is, in part, the movie, um, Leave the World Behind. It was a, it was a, a fascinating movie. I will say that I really wasn't surprised by a lot of the information, which I believe is true information. You know, they say Hollywood put everything in movies. They have to show you before they roll it out. But I remember uh, in one of our previous videos talking about, um, I think it was Luke chapter 27, where it talked about um, the disciples were asking the Messiah, um, Yahweh Shai, Masindisi, whatever you want to call him. Some people call him Jesus, but that was not his name. Jesus means son of Zeus. Uh, so that was not his name. But, you know, that's not what this is about. <laughs> but they were asking um, um, Yahweh Shai, uh, when will we know? What will the last days be like? And he said many, many things, but the two things that I pointed out in a previous video, let's get prepared, is that he said that the last days will be as the days of Noah and of Sodom and Gomorrah. The last days will be like that. So I went back a while ago and I read, um, those two stories and I pulled out the similarities of those two stories and what I got out of those two stories because he was very specific in saying that the last day will be like two of these events the days of Noah and of Sodom and Gomorrah one thing we know in both stories it was very evil it was so evil that the Most High brought destruction. That happened in the days of Noah, and it happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. The second thing that I noticed about the two stories is he gave warning to the righteous. And <clears throat> he warned them. Noah had time to prepare. The only difference between Sodom and Gomorrah and um, Sodom and Gomorrah and the days of Noah is uh, Lot didn't have uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot was the was the one that the Most High was speaking to in Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot didn't have as much time as Noah had. Noah had time to prepare. He had time to build his ark, go off grid. He had time to put up his food, store his food, can his food. He had time to get his animal and all of that on the ark and his family on the ark. He had time to prepare, but yet there was a preparation period. And it's something that the children, that the righteous had to do. They couldn't just there wasn't going to just be an instant snap and then everyone saved. It's you had to obey. And you had to move towards, uh, you had to believe the prophet, which was Noah. And you had to move and, uh, and do something to pre prepare, prepare. And the same thing in the story of Lot. Um, Lot was Abraham's nephew. Pretty much grew up and was raised by uh, Abraham. He told his family, hey, we have to hurry up and get out. 
So it's the same thing except Noah had more time. And, and that shows me that there's going to be two different types of situations. You're going to have some that prepared, and then you're going to have some that last minute that they, they hear. So, so far, the two similarities is, um, is the, prepara the preparation as well as the warning, right? So what next? Let's look at another parallel. Another parallel is that I said it was evil. I'm sorry, I, I kind of got confused. I have a, a, some, a few distractions. We said it was evil. We said they had to prepare and, and they had to hear and prepare, whether they had a long time or a short time. The next thing that I noticed is that Noah got his whole family on the um, on the ark but I'm but he left others behind other loved ones you other you know it was other people that he was related to on the earth but he was able to get his wife his daughters and daughters and son-in-laws and sons and daughter-in-laws whatever well he had four sons I'm sure he had more because uh, the Bantu scrolls we have doesn't have all the books but we know he had four sons and they had wives. So he got his immediate family out uh, onto the ark. And when destruction came, they were protected on the ark. Lot, on the other hand, he wasn't able to convince his entire family. He was only able to convince his wife and his two daughters and himself. The rest wanted to stay because Sodom and Gomorrah was the place to be. It was America, <laughs> you know. It was the best thing since sliced bread. They didn't want to leave. And even though Lot's wife left, when the destruction fell, she turned back. She turned back. So then she, she was uh, uh, destroyed. What am I saying? When I talk to some family members who are Christians, and I don't really like that word because that was a word coined by, um, you know, by colonizers. Uh, we had a belief system that was, was uh, stronger than Christianity based on the Bantu scrolls and the Black Messiah, of course. Um, but anyway, um, what we do know is, oh, let me back up. When I have spoken to uh, loved ones, family members, oh, we're going to ride it out. Oh, the Most High is going to take care of us. Well, how did he take care of Noah? Did he rapture Noah? How did he take care of Lot? Did he rapture Lot? These are the things that we need to ask ourselves. The Most High is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And one of the things that really, really um, caught my attention in this movie, which is basically showing us that in the end it showed that some people were prepared. And even though they were prepared, they didn't leave they were stuck in places to where they couldn't even get to their bunker, you know. Um, but one of the things that I really, that really stood out at the end of the movie, or closer to the end of the movie, and it's going to be the younger generation that can hear and that can move out. And I think that that was significant, that the young girl told a story, a profound story, of a person with wisdom beyond measure. And she told a story about a, a flood that was coming. And it was, it was um, broadcast uh, for the whole community to hear. And it was this one, everyone else, everyone left, but this one man said, I'm going to stay. I'm going to trust God. He will save me. 
and the flood came and the um, water started to rise. And as the water started to rise, the man was looking and he didn't see God, but he saw a rowboat. The guy said, come on, come on, get out, get out. He said, oh no, I'm going to stay. The Most High is going to save me. And then the waters rose more and more till he found himself on the rooftop. And once he got on the rooftop, he saw a helicopter and they dropped the ladder and they said, hey, come on in, the water's rising, come on, come on. He said, no, I'm not going anywhere. The Most High will save me. So the waters continued to rise and the man drowned and he went to heaven and when he got to the pearly gates, he goes, God, why didn't you save me? He said, did I not warn you? Did I not send a a boat for you? Did I not send a helicopter for you? I came, but you rejected me. So I'm telling this story. Number one, please go see the movie. And I do remember one more parallel that I believe is going to happen. I forgot about this. In both of the stories, out of all of humanity, Noah was only able to save a few. And Lot was able to save even a fewer amount because people would not hear and people would not listen. So guys, what I'm saying to you, this is your Sabbath message. If you've heard the call and you are on the ark, Share this story, share the video, but if you don't want to share the video, that's fine too. Share the story to your friends and family. And when it falls on deaf ears, then you've done your part. But when it has fallen on um, good soil and ripe soil, we need to help people. And, and, and we're not saying become, you know, we, me and Almighty, we've made a lot of mistakes. We've done a lot of free work. And free is okay, but you find that people don't appreciate you when it's free. They expect you. And um, so just like Noah had to invest and do something for his family, Everyone else has uh, a, uh, a portion to carry. So, you know, um, we all have to prepare. We all have to know that uh, things are being fulfilled in this world. And I wanna be on the right side of, uh, of salvation. And I want to be the one also that when I do have to stand before the Most High that I can say, that I've done my part in saving as many of the righteous as possible so that we can be the righteous seed that will once again bring righteousness back on this earth. And it will be that place where um, the lions will lay with the, is it the lamb, you know. But anyway, guys, I hope um, that this helped you today and if you like this type of content if you like the sabbath uh storytelling or sabbath sharing please let me know and i will definitely uh, try to do more in the near future okay guys again thank you so much for sitting with me and see you in the next video please like share and subscribe